Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome all viewers. Today I wanted to share a verse from the Quran. Allah tells us that which means, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you, so that you may become of those who have taqwa, so that you may become righteous. So if we analyze this verse, firstly, Allah begins with, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O oh, you who believe. When we hear this, we should understand that Allah is getting our attention. Allah has a message specifically for those of us who believe in Allah, believe in the messengers, believe in the angels, believe in the books, believe in the day of judgment, believe in the divine decree. We should listen attentively. What is this message that Allah has specifically for us? And we should also recognize that whatever follows that phrase it is attached to our belief. If it's an obligation, then fulfilling that obligation is a sign that our belief is intact. It is a good sign that we truly do believe. Whereas failing to fulfill that obligation is a sign that there is a problem. There's a deficiency with our belief. So what does Allah say? He says, O oh, you who believe, kutiba alaykum siyam Fasting has been prescribed upon you. So this is the obligation that follows O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you. So for those of us who are fasting the month of Ramadan, understand that this is a sign that we believe in Allah. This is a manifestation of our Iman, of our belief. Our belief is not just something we say, it's not just something that we feel in our hearts, but it's something we do. So for those of you fasting the month of Ramadan, rejoice, be grateful that Allah guided you to belief. And anybody who is not fasting the month of Ramadan, there's one of two things. Number one is that you have a valid excuse because Allah tells us, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah does not charge a soul except with that within its capacity. So without getting into the details and the specifics, there are legitimate reasons for people to not fast. However, if somebody is not fasting and they have no valid excuse, this shows a severe problem with one's belief. What is it that is keeping you from fulfilling this obligation that Allah commanded? Whatever it is, I do want to bring good news that Allah, He is the acceptor of repentance. Allah is so pleased and happy when His servant repents to Him. So if you are not fasting Ramadan without a legitimate excuse, then this is a perfect opportunity to right now repent to Allah, turn back to Him, ask for forgiveness, and try to make things right. And as I said, Allah is the acceptor of repentance and he is so happy when we turn to him with repentance. Allah continues, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you. So our nation, the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, we are not the first or only nation that was commanded to fast. But rather, this is something that Allah prescribed for past nations as well. And this should comfort us by letting us know that this isn't some unique hardship that is just exclusively for us, nor is it a blessing that only past nations got to benefit from. But rather, this is something that past nations were commanded to do, and we were also commanded to do. And then the ayah concludes, O oh, you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you, so that you may become of those who have taqwa. Now what is taqwa? Taqwa is sometimes translated as righteousness or piety, but a solid definition of taqwa is to do what Allah commanded, hoping for his reward, and to avoid what Allah prohibited, fearing his punishment. And this is something that we gain by fasting. Allah is Al-Hakim. He is the one with perfect wisdom. By Him prescribing fasting upon us, of course, there is perfect wisdom behind it. And from that wisdom is that by giving up these provisions that are usually permissible for us to eat and to drink, by giving up those provisions, we obtain the best of provisions, which is taqwa. Because Allah tells us in the Quran, فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ taqwa. Indeed, the best provision is taqwa. When we think about provisions, what comes to mind? Money, food, drink, shelter. But when you have the provision of taqwa, when you are 
doing what Allah commanded, hoping for his reward and avoiding what Allah prohibited, fearing his punishment, then you are fulfilling your purpose in life. You are getting closer to the one who is in charge, who has ultimate authority and control over every other provision. Who's the one that provides us with money, with food and drink, safety, security, happiness? It's Allah, our creator. And Allah is so merciful that he even gives provisions to those of us who are disobedient, for those who disbelieve in him, for those who purposefully run towards every evil that Allah prohibited. All of us benefit from various provisions in this life, but taqwa is something that will benefit us eternally in the hereafter. Taqwa is a provision that keeps a human being fulfilling their purpose in life, fulfilling the purpose in which they were created, which is to worship Allah alone, to walk the straight path in this life, which leads to eternal paradise in the hereafter. So let us remember that this month while we're fasting, we may be decreasing in food and drink consumption. We may be decreasing in energy. But let us remember that we are increasing in something greater than all of those things, and that is taqwa. So may Allah grant us taqwa. May Allah guide us to paradise in the hereafter. May Allah accept our fasting and all of our acts of worship. This month, Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.